Today is the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany. Let us talk about this year's Epiphany season. Epiphany is a day of manifestation and appearance and showing. For this is what the word Epiphania means in Greek. It is striking to me that 75 years ago, America dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima on August 6th, the feast day of the Transfiguration. The official code name for that project, the Manhattan Project, was Trinity. One month ago, on the feast day of the Epiphany, white supremacists and conspirator crowds in America brought their guns and Confederate flags, their hatred and their Jesus flags, and their chance to lynch a vice president into the nation's Capitol building, seeking to kidnap congressional leaders and to overturn a solemn ritual counting of electoral votes for a new president. This invasion killed five people, left many injured in its wake, and traumatized numerous Congress people and their staffs who were doing their jobs to approve an election. Feast days are holy days. Feast days in any religion are archetypal. They not only open the soul to deep stories and truths of a particular lineage, they sacralize it. In the case of the Transfiguration, we are talking about a remembrance so great and so profound that in Eastern Christianity, not tainted by St. Augustine's notion of original sin, the Feast of the Transfiguration is the greatest feast day of the year, more significant than Christmas or Good Friday or Easter. Why is that? The Transfiguration commemorates that occasion when Jesus took three of his closest friends and disciples to a mountaintop, where they experienced not just the friend and rabbi teacher that they knew, but the numinosity of the divine that shone in Jesus and from him, and that dwells in all of us. The name for that showing and revelation and epiphany is the cosmic Christ, such as John 1 speaks about, the light in all things. Or that Catholic monk Thomas Merton experienced while crossing a street in downtown Louisville one day during noon rush hour, when he saw each person in the crowd, strangers that they were to him, all lit up. He wrote in his journal the next day, how is it possible to tell people that they are all walking around shining like the sun. The cosmic Christ is found in the very earliest Christian scriptures, Paul's letters, as well as the Gospel of Thomas and the four Gospels. An atomic bomb is, as Robert Oppenheimer, the chief maker of the bomb declared, an epiphany, an epiphany of evil. He cited the Bhagavad Gita, quote, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds, unquote. Oppenheimer declared that physicists have known sin, and this is a knowledge that they cannot lose. On the Feast of Transfiguration, we remember the mystery of the light of Christ that shines in every person and every being, and the historic reality of human capacity for evil. The bomb lit the sky over Hiroshima and destroyed people in their buildings in a flash on August 6, 1945. Light, often a symbol of divinity, that day became a revelation of man's capacity for evil. Side by side, evil and divinity, shadow and light, play out in human history. The image of God in us, the Christ nature and Buddha nature in us, needs attention and honoring, lest evil triumph. On the Feast of Epiphany 2021, another bomb went off, this one in the inner sanctum of American democracy. 
manufactured by decades of lies and cover up and crazed conspiracy theories spread in the media and the political sphere. Lies of denial of climate change and of the seriousness of coronavirus in our midst. Denial is a form of lies and coronavirus is a child of climate change. It metastasized into the big lie about who won an election. Wounded and untended to souls, ridden with toxic masculinity, bullied their way into the Capitol building. The same energy manifests itself in school shootings and other mass murders of innocent children from Columbine to Parkland High School and beyond. It also manifests in political figures who seem to have no inner life, incapable of introspection, bereft of truth seeking, suffering from patriarchal reptilian brain disease, taken over by the idols of patriarchy and capitalism and worshiping a God of power and gold, Wall Street and living an unexamined life. The Feast Day of Epiphany closes the Christmas season of 12 days and recounts the birth of a Prince of Peace that promises, quote, peace to all people of goodwill, unquote. The Magi, not Jews or Christians, but pagans and Gentiles, travel from afar, follow a star to the manger to make homage to a newborn king. Along the way, they are asked by Herod the agent of the Roman Empire, to stop by on their way back and report about the newborn king, because, as he says, quote, I want to worship him, unquote. Like many politicians, Herod has a problem with the truth and is blatantly hypocritical in his stated promise to worship the king. What he really wants to do is to kill the baby out of envy and fear Frustrated because the Magi do not return to tell him the address of the newborn child, a dream warned them not to, he rages until his reptilian brain spills over and orders a massacre of all the young male children in the area near Jesus' home. Killing, not worshiping, is on his mind. The massacre carried on by the Proud Boys and other vigilante groups, egged on by politicians in high places on Epiphany Day 2021 in the nation's capital, also reeks of hypocrisy. Boasting to be the party of law and order who support the police, but in reality, leaving behind among the dead at their hands is a policeman doing his job protecting a hallowed site in the American lineage, beaten by a Trump follower with a fire extinguisher, and two more police who committed suicide following the riot. 140 policemen were injured, four other people died, and many Congress people and staff were traumatized by the events, saying nothing of millions of Americans watching on television. This haiku came to me. Piles of lies, Lady Justice cries, democracy dies. And so, just as the Feast of Transfiguration in 1945 was a reverse of the celebration of the cosmic Christ and the light of the world caught up in human war and empire building, so too the Feast of Epiphany 2021 was an inversion to the meaning of epiphany. It turned out to be a showing, a manifestation, surely, but of the shadow side of American history, where the chickens of genocide toward indigenous peoples, slavery toward black peoples, civil war, racism, Jim Crow, and sentimental religion all came home to roost. Patriarchy unleashed, mob violence on display, 
Confederate flags waving in the Capitol. Such revelations are needed from time to time to unveil the truth of things and inspire deep change. The fact that 245 Congress people, after undergoing hours of fright and desperation and anger at the hands of the incensed mob, actually voted to table the democratically determined electoral votes for a new president, simply underscores and lays bare the depth of the dark days of democracy that America and many other nations are going through at this time. Much work awaits us. Such work must include the inner work of redefining what it means to be in community and what it means to be a human being and what it means to be a man. What is healthy masculinity? Will the reptilian brain have the last word? Or just for community and cooperation, listening hold priority? Where is the divine feminine? Will the mammal brain, the compassionate brain of kinship and family, finally rise to the surface again? Julian of Norwich calls for recognizing the divine feminine in all dimensions of divinity throughout the Trinity. In God the Creator, who she says is delighted to be both our father and our mother. In Christ, who is motherly because he practices a motherhood of service and compassion. And in the Spirit, wisdom incarnate, wisdom being a she in the Bible and throughout the world. Love, Julian insists, overcomes evil and actually laughs at evil. Today's gospel tells us that Jesus cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. Demons are plenty among us today as a nation and as a species. Can we be about Jesus' work and cast out the demons of hate and lies and patriarchal privilege in favor of a revelation and epiphany of divine love? Julian gave two names to her book, the first book written by a woman in English. And she lived through the bubonic plague of the 14th century. Showings is one title of her book. How fitting to be invoking it at Epiphany season. Her second title is, the same book, Revelations of Divine Love. Showings and Revelations of Divine Love. Both speak to the deeper meaning of Epiphany 2021. In the name of the Creator God, who is Mother as well as Father, in the name of the Son, who is Mother also, and the name of the Holy Spirit, who is, who is Mother and Wisdom. Amen.